Alright, so we're back once again, and today we're going to be touching on a topic that I think a lot of players, new players, old players, players that are good at the game, players that are bad at the game. I just describe myself pretty much in every other game. Sometimes I'm good, sometimes I'm bad, sometimes I am act like an old player, sometimes I act like a new player. Anyways, the topic, before I forget is when to cut your losses, accept defeat, and basically churn out as much damage as possible. Generally, I know a lot of new players I notice tend to uh, put themselves in situations where before they realize what's actually happen happening, their chances of actually winning the game or even affecting the game or just generally not dying turn to zero. And so this game is going to be a basically a perfect illustration of a little bit of autopilot, a little bit of zoning out, and realizing before it's too late that you put yourself in an impossible position and you can't actually get yourself out of it. So, as you'll notice, like all good random games right now, we lost all three caps at the very start of the game and we just don't gain them back for the entirety of the game. We have Bismarck on my left hand flank with an Ajir, a Kluber, and a German DD that I'm not even going to try to pronounce the name of. While on our right hand flank, we have an Amalfi flanking, an Ohio, and an Albin straight ahead of me. Now, what this does is, as I try to get a Citadel on a Bismarck, is it kind of locks me in to an extent. Sure, I can angle towards the Bismarck if he decides he wants to shoot at me, but again, that leaves me exposed on my entire broadside to things like the Ohio and also the Elbin, with the Republic kind of pushing in the right hand flank too. But again, at the same time, if I want to angle to the Ohio, then I'm showing broadside to an Ajir and a Bismarck. And as we all know, the, the Yamato isn't a. Uh, the tank is a ship's when showing flat broadside. Now, something weird happens this game. This Elbin just sits here the entire game, just going backwards and forth. Um, again, very questionable. But again, at the same time, he doesn't actually have to do all that much because, again, I need to stop saying again. We lose control of all three caps. And even though we have a Darien and a Marceau on this entire flank, we somehow find it impossible, impossible to regain control of C. Again, I'll leave you to question that by yourself. Now at this point, it may seem easy here that I can get out of this position and go wherever I want. But if you look at the actual state of the map, you see that it's not actually all that easy. Because for one thing, if I decide to leave this flank right now and push to the left hand side of the map, the only real shots I'm going to have are maybe a Stalingrad, maybe a Kleber, ships like that. Ships that with the Yamato's shell velocity velocity you're going to have a relatively hard time to actually hit instead my only real option is to generally angle in try and be a bit more of a presence on C and actually take the initiative because by the looks of things our Marceau and our Daring seem to be not all that fond of doing that like Daring what are you why are you sitting there <gasps> why are you sitting there anyways we do see the Amalfi being a bit adventurous and deciding to push in, which is again a questionable in and of itself. But I'm quite happy in this position. I can go backwards and forwards. The Elbing doesn't pose all that much of a torpedo threat to me right now. Generally, the biggest torpedo threat right now is actually the enemy carrier. But at the same time, I don't want to overexpose myself by pushing in too hard. And it's something I'm very, very cognizant of especially in this game, because you can see the Ohio starting to push. You can see the Vampire and the Elbing are in a position where they can very easily crossfire me with torpedoes if they uh, decide to do so. But again, my main focus right now is turning out damage, trying to finish off the Samalfi so we can get a little bit more control on our right hand flank and uh, not expose ourselves too much in terms of our broadside. Meanwhile, as random battles tends to happen, or tends to uh, play out, our entire left hand flank is in the process of collapsing. Which is a bit unfortunate, but again, it is only 12 minutes into the game. And while I get three overpens on a broadside Amalfi, and celebrate that fact, we see the Elbing still in the same position. This provides me with a little bit of security right now. And um, I decided to take on the position or take on the role of the daring and uh, decide to push in 
while he seems a little bit too frightened to do so. Again, no shade. It's random battles. People could be learning how to play. People could just make random mistakes. I think I played this game late at night, so maybe that explains some of the uh, interesting decisions. Now at this point we see the Republic straight ahead of me. We see, and I know, I know for a fact that the Ohio is on my right hand flank. This makes removing myself from this position neon impossible. The only thing I can really do right now is generally, generally reverse. Um, again, if I turn to my left, I'm going to risk showing flat broadside to a Republic, which is something I don't really want to do, even though the ship isn't, you know, isn't the biggest or the best at punishing from that position, but it still can it still is a tier 10 battleship, it still can punish you really heavily. And if I turn to my right, again the Republic can punish me, but also the Ohio can be a little bit more of a threat, and the Ohio, both these battleships anyways, the main thing I'm trying to get across is that both these battleships are set up in such a way where I can't turn out to get, create enough distance to get myself away. And so at this point, I've kind of accepted my fate. Some, simultaneously though, the vampire does pop up, which means again, I have to angle towards him. And so in this position, luckily yeah, I avoid those torpedoes, but at this position, I basically have to accept my fate. Sure, I can try and dissuade myself from this, from the location. I can just reverse consistently backwards and backwards and backwards. But at this point, I just have to accept it, try and churn out as much damage as possible, and see if I can make a difference overall in the game. We do get a Citadel on the Ohio, which is nice. Again, one is not all that much, especially considering the Ohio is at a relatively high level of HP, so... But again, every little helps in this scenario. Our turn does go on Cap B. Um, I try and ping him to make him realize that the Albion is on extremely low HP, and he can uh, aggressively pursue him. But, uh, yeah, he decides to deny that request, and he's going to sit in B for the remainder of the game. Which, uh, yeah, we're not going to talk much more about that, because I had much stronger feelings when the game was actually happening. At this point, though, the Republic seems to be very content and show me a very flat broadside. You'll see at this point, too, I am lower than usual um, and that's for one reason um, I've been watching a lot of videos on aiming right at the minute and I find that it's much more accurate to use the minimap in terms of aiming than it is to actually use the um, crosshair on the screen especially when it comes to leading the ship and kind of the vertical dispersion too or the vertical lead shall I say um, if you aim your little circle on the minimap as you can see it right now right in front of the enemy ship um, even if it looks a bit weird in terms of on the actual screen or on the actual reticle, it tends to be a lot more effective in consistently hitting the enemy ship. Sure, you might not get those citadels, but it tends to be a lot more consistent in terms of pens versus overpens versus shatters versus bounces. It's just something I picked up on, or I think I watched a um, potato quality's video. Very informative, so shout out to him. At this point again, we're just trying to churn out as much damage because we can't really accelerate forward and turn left because we'll be susceptible to the Ohio. And at the same time, we can't accelerate and turn right because we'll be susceptible to the Republic eating those flat broadsides. So the best we can do right now is reverse, hope the Bismarck absorbs enough of the carrier's damage so that we can get to 100k. And uh, then basically, hopefully, we can kill the Ohio and affect the actual outcome of the game. Who am I kidding? We're not going to affect the outcome of this game. We're down two caps, we're down 800 points, and uh, our daring is going on a mission to try and catch a CV that is on the edge of the map. Again, definitely not salty. Now we do attract attention from the carrier, but being on this flank, I pretty much accepted my fate. And with it being the FDR, and with the FDR doing FDR things, we're going to be eating a hell of a lot of torpedoes. We do manage to damage con them, but again, we're making the best out of an extremely bad situation. With that being said though, with 30 points to go, sometimes you just have to accept the position you're in and uh, just, deal, just deal out as much damage as you can. Uh, there's not much more to be said. 
I hope you enjoyed. I do plan coming out with much more uh, structured content in the future in the next couple of videos, but until then, I thought this was a nice little filler and a nice little uh, topic. But until next time, I'll see you all in the next one.